Swole Benji here. Today I'm going to talk to you about why the war gloves and cultist robe are bad choices for PvE. Let's get straight into it, okay? So, uh, a lot of people have been told to use war gloves for just farming mobs in the open world. And you know, it's, it's, it's actually fine. Uh, however, I wouldn't risk a 400,000 uh, silver... Uh, war gloves with extremely high spec in a red zone um, when you could do the same amount of damage and have the same amount of clear speed with a 4.1 trash set. Uh, but that's just me. Um, I understand that um, some people may want to actually level the war gloves rather than use fame credits to level it the easier way. And that's fine too if they want to try uh, harder and and do more th you know just do more work for less output that's completely fine they can play the game out how however they want but i want to talk to you why it's a bad idea to use war gloves and why it's even a worse idea to use the cultist robe a lot of people have been in, they're being told lately that cultist robe is the king of armors when it comes to pve um which is player versus environment that's uh that's me versus monsters in the open world all right um so, Cultist Robe, the problem with Cultist Robe is while equipping it, because it's a cloth armor, it gives you that 50% damage increase. Uh, Druid Robe's activation actually goes beyond that, and so does Cleric Robe, and they're both way cheaper. But, besides that, um, the only real reason to use Cultist Robe is in niche PvP situations where your opponent doesn't have a crowd control. It's basically a free win. Okay, and yes, it has this ability where it can heal you, where you rise into the air. Okay, let's look at the tooltip. You rise into the air, and you uh, you get some resistances, and you heal some HP and your energy, right? Okay, uh, so the uh, resistances, the damage re resistances that you actually get from having this activated, you get not quite as much, but about 100 plus resistance just using leather armor. There's no reason not to use leather armor over the cultist robe for one, okay? Uh, but look how long this takes, okay? Look, you aren't DPSing, you're not killing mobs while this is happening. And yes, it's nice to have a heal. However, there's way many other ways in this game to heal than stopping combat for one. And energy, you know, uh, getting your energy back, that's something that all builds need. You need to have uh, mana efficient skills, which I'm going to tell you right now, the war gauntlets do not have mana efficient skills. Gravitational Collapse here costs 107 energy. It's it's insanely expensive. It is it is not cheap to cast this. All right, um, I'm in 8.3 gear, so obviously I have a bigger mana bar. So don't worry about that. But let me tell you about the Hellion Jacket. Okay, now not only does the Hellion Jacket give you those resistances all the time that Cultist Robe doesn't. Yes, you do deal slightly less damage, but you want to know what makes up for the damage. The fact that you have this damage aura that you can activate. Not only does this um, hurt enemies, this is going to hurt enemies way, way more than any boost that you're going to get from wearing cloth armor. It also heals you, and it doesn't take you out of combat. So you can fight while it's activated. It has about the same amount of cooldown. That's not a big deal either. But because it gives you more protection all of the time, it deals more damage when you activate it. It keeps you healed. Uh, it even heals you way more if you're actually low on health. It is a far superior choice at all times to the cultist robe. All right, it's also cheaper than the cultist robe, mind you. Um, and because you're not wearing cloth, you're not being you know beaten up and and damaged and badly injured when you're out there farming. All right, but uh, let's just compare. Um, now I do have max spec in the great axe, whereas I don't have max spec in the spike gauntlets. Um, but I do want to compare just the ease of use, okay? Because I have more complaints about War Gauntlets than just that, uh, they're bursty. Alright, is, is there, I, I, just real quick, I want to see, is there, uh, this is the test realm. There's not the, uh, the obelisks set up in the town yet. I'm having to use all of this manually, that's why I've blown through a bunch of silver. Just buying out the markets on the test realm, you know, this is just test realm stuff. Okay. So, let's start with the, uh, the the War Gauntlets. We're going to use the Cultist Robe, too. And I know it's not really a fair comparison because it's 4.1 versus 8.3. I get that. But, hey, it's a Tier 5 zone, whatever. It doesn't matter. Also, just to address a few people, really old comments. I, I address this often. People have always complained, why aren't you using 8.3 in a Tier 5 zone? 
And my retort to that is, if you're going to be farming in a safe zone where you have 0% chance to lose gear, you have no excuse not to use the best gear possible. Because that increases your maximum efficiency so that you can farm as fast as possible. Now granted, I would just take a tier 6 flat axe out to the to the red zone. I wouldn't be taking an 8.3 axe into the red zone at all. Now I'd just take like a 5.1 or a 4.2 alien jacket. Super, super cheap. Um, if this video gets popular, you can expect those prices to rise up. Um, but, right now we have the, the war gauntlets on, and generally the way you play this is you aggro all the mobs. Some of them are ranged, it's whatever. Okay, you dismount, and then you just nuke them with your big cone attack. And because you have high spec and you're using a high uh, damaging war gauntlet, that E is going to pretty much kill them. Then you hit them with one Q, hit them with the W, and that's going to kill them too, right? And generally that's how you play it. Um, and then when you need health and HP, you would, you know, rise up, and so on and so forth. But, um, it's not good against bosses. Alright, so, you know, let's actually put those back on. Let's go find us a boss mob. Now, you're not always going to run into boss mobs when you're in the open world. But, it, when you do, you're going you're gonna to be smacking them for a little while. You're going to be whacking and smacking, and, and like, here's a minor boss. Not, a, not even a full boss. Okay, so here's... Here's some glowy mobs. This one's got the spiky circle underneath, meaning it's a boss monster. So let's uh, let's begin. We're gonna start with the AOE. Give them some kicks. Now I don't want to use up my Q cooldown, so I've got to wait. Now this this woman's beating me up pretty good, so I'm gonna use some defensives here. If I can stay alive, and you can look at my damage here. Okay, so I'm hitting them. I gotta wait on that cooldown. It's time to rise up, get some health back. We're still fighting. All right, we're gonna eat that, but that's okay. Well, it was okay. All right, and if I E this this lady now with the big floppy skin things, um, you know, we're going to win, okay? But see how long it took and how much damage or health I lost? All right, and again, this is not a fair comparison because I'm using 8.3, so obviously I'm way more defensive, but let me just show you the ease of use. Also, everyone says use a beef stew for more damage, and with, with something like a Great Axe, with a Hellion Jacket, like... All my attacks are circular. Like, this is a circle, this is a circle, this is a circle, and my armor, it's a circle, okay? Um, every attack is going to hit everything around me. A roast pork is far, far better, okay? Because every time I hit everything, I'm just going to life leech 9.45% of that back. All right. Now, as for mana problems, the Scholar Cow, you activate this energy shield, that gives you more resistances while you're in combat. It doesn't take you out of combat, and... It's going to fully restore my energy the second I activate it, okay? So let's look at this fight once again. And again, don't worry about my HP because uh, obviously um, I have better armor on. That's not the point. But the point is, is the ease of use, okay? With the War Gauntlets, I have to pay attention to my Q's cooldown to not use it up until they're about to die. I have to worry about positioning. Uh, another gripe to, and let's just put this back on. Like, say I'm fighting a mob here, like, ba 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 ba. I'm in the red zone, right? And I do this kick attack. Oops, I just unsummoned my mount. Now six guys right up uh, because their ASP told them I would have no mount and they just basically murder me and take my stuff. So that's not fun. And uh, the thing with the war gauntlets, you know, is, uh, you know, you can do this little slide and the second you slide outside of that circle, boom, your horse is gone. And you're, and you're dead. You're stranded. You are screwed. Okay. And uh, another thing too is you might actually do one of these attacks. Like, like say the boss is doing a big AOE and you do this. Oops, now I'm in the AOE and now I'm dead. Right, because I can't move mid-air or mid-slide. I can't change my positioning. But with the with the great axe, I can I can as I'm spinning, I can go wherever the heck I want while I'm still attacking. So it is superior in terms of that. Also, a lot of these mobs stun you, they knock you up, they knock you around. Okay, now while you're while you're using whirlwind, guess what? You cannot be stunned, you cannot be interrupted, and uh, you can move while channeling. So uh, it counters all of that. Anyway. So let's look at this fight now. Basically, this is something that I can do while watching anime or YouTube or not even paying attention to the screen, whereas the War Gauntlets, I need the full attention on the screen, okay? So I just sit here, hit all my abilities, and I'm just spinning, I'm not even looking at the screen right now. I don't even know if I'm being in the right position. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hitting my buttons on the keyboard, not paying attention. I'm, I'm off looking at my girlfriend's cat, okay? And, um, is the boss dead yet? It's probably close to dead. I'm gonna look at the screen now. And I'm using my armor. That's gonna give me all my HP back. I'm gonna use the shield. 
I'm gonna stand in this attack. Hey, look, I got all my mana back, and that did no damage. And look at this. Oh no, I got adds. Oh, I would surely be dead if I was using war gauntlets, or gloves, or whatever. Let's weave in some autos, hit the smash space bar. It's fine. And see, that was so brain dead and so easy. There's no reason why you should ever use the war gauntlets. Uh, and, and some people may think, well, it's faster. They're going to argue that it's faster to do these convoluted combos, and I'm going to say no, it's not. So let me, let's, uh, let's do a nice pull. Look at, look at this big juicy pull here. Get all of these big boys. Get them all nice and clumped together, and let's go. This one I'll pay a little bit of attention for, but look at this. They're, they're doing ground slams. I only got stunned at the end there. Got my shield up. I'm going to get my mana back. Oh no, I'm taking a bit of damage. Well, they're starting to die, Ooh. but... I turn on my armor, look at this, look at my look at my HP, look at it just come right back up to the full, right? I'm not even attacking anymore, I'm just, look at that, I'm nearly full HP. Every time I attack, my roast pork is uh, healing me from all of the all of the enemies that I'm hitting, and uh, that was super easy, I'm still full health, full mana. Um, War gauntlets are going to be nearly out of mana, okay? I'm going to go ahead and just keep this armor on, and... Uh, Try to find another big pack, right? Guys, it's uh, it's no contest, okay? Because I can do this in a flat six axe. It's not so much the damage; it's the consistent damage, the consistent healing, and uh, and these are weaker mobs. These aren't even boss monsters. Like I I AOE boss monsters in that one and that pull, right? So let's get them all nice and nice and uh, clumped up, and they're gonna die in one hit because they're normal mobs. But now I have to fight this guy. He's a little bit beefy, you know. Weaving some autos. Make sure I hit him with a slide. Now I can uppercut them. There we go. Right, now look at my mana um, compared to the other one. And yeah, it's... But look, if you really want to level up War Gauntlets, um, I wouldn't level them up for PvE. I would level them up purely for PvP, because they're pretty, they're alright in PvP, you know? They're, they're okay, like, for dungeons, I guess, they're not bad. Right, they're not terrible. There, hit them all there. Let's go ahead and use the armor. It's grow big. Then we have to weave in and out. We can't just circle around them. Weave in and out. See how long this is taking? This is taking effort. This is taking my attention away from anime. And how dare you take attention away from anime? Alright, and now I can hit him with the second cooldown. It's just it's just taking too long. And this is an 8.3 gauntlets too. Alright, now we can maybe slide uppercut this lady. And uh, there we go, got her. So it's just it's just more effort. There's no reason you should exert more effort into this game. You should just play it as lazy as possible, guys. Uh, but yeah, that's my gripe on the cultist robe uh, and the war gauntlets. I just I just don't think they're something you should ever farm with or use in the open world. Uh, there's so many better options. Um, if for boss sniping, bolt casters obviously are the, the kings. Um, <laughs> I like crossbow, not bad either. Uh, Great Axe, just the laziest way to play in the game. The laziest, most non-pay attention, nonchalant, non-who gives a crap way to play. Just spin to win, you heal all the damage that you deal. It's it's just great, nice, free progression while you just spin to watch all, all the Marvel movies or something. I don't know. Whatever you're into, okay? But guys, that's the video. I just wanted to gripe about those two items. And every time I'm out in the open world and I see people using... War Gauntlets and Cultist Robe, I just laugh. If I see anyone ever, like, doing a dungeon in a Cultist Robe, I'm just like, why? Why, why are you using this? It's so dumb. Anyway, that's that's the video, guys. I'm Soul Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. I know I haven't made Albion vids in a while, but uh, Elden Ring is, is uh, it's, it's steep. I'm still learning Elden Ring, and uh, I don't want to put videos out for that game until I have got something very concrete and solid to share. I'm still working on that, but once I get that down, it's going to be Elden Ring vids every day. Anyway, guys, see you tomorrow. Take care. Make sure you join. Become a member. It's five bucks a month. If I can self-sustain all my bills and food and costs of living uh, through YouTube memberships, then I will release a cool members-only guide in video form on how I can make two to three million in like 20 minutes on Albin Online through crafting. Which it's kind of an exploit, and that's why I'm not releasing it so soon until I can live off of YouTube, essentially. Anyway, guys, make sure you subscribe and like the video, leave a comment, and comment on someone else's comment, too. Don't just comment the word comment. Actually leave a, a, an actual comment about the video, okay? Start up a discussion. Don't, like, use it as a forum board. The Albion Online forums are garbage. Don't use those. Use, use my comment section instead. 
Uh, also, I just want to say that I'm the only YouTuber that does Albion Online videos that's, you know, has a decent audience size that um, doesn't get giveaways. I don't get giveaways from SBI. SBI hates my guts. They absolutely hate me as a person. And every single YouTuber, even like the 400 subscriber channel YouTubers, all get giveaway free codes and free skins. Now, I just want to tell you a quick thing too before I end the video, just for those that made it this far. There are other YouTubers out there, whom I won't name exactly, but um, they, they get free skins from SBI to show off to get their viewers to, you know, buy them. They're like, hey, here's some free skins for making Albion Online content. Keep it up. Also, make sure you equip the skin on your next live stream or your next video. Thanks. And uh, they don't do that to me because they hate my guts. And uh, yeah, so be a bad boy and support me. Don't don't be like everyone else. And um, you know, you, know, you, you want to support the bad guy, the villain of the story, right? Come on, guys. It's, it's just all good fun. Anyway, um, that's it for me. Come back tomorrow for another video. Take care.